Hey everybody, Mark Spector Comics, and I'm back. This time with my thoughts on WandaVision series finale, episode 9. Uh, the season in general, reaction to some like big, oh wow, you know, portions of the um, episode. Thoughts going forward, and a little bit of spec. So if you guys want my thoughts on that, stay tuned. Right, I'm back. So uh, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you get my content when I put it out there. Um, unfortunately, like I said previously, I wasn't able to do my episode 8 reaction because it got taken down. Which was unfortunate because I had a really good spec book in there that ended up panning out. If you watched episode 9 and I'll get into that uh, a little bit further. Um, so... As we saw, episode 9, it's done. You know, it was titled Series Finale. So, I'll give you some of my thoughts on that. Um, I thought it was a good episode, you know. It was definitely the most uh, CGI involved. And I believe Kevin Feige mentioned that the last episode was going to have more of a resemblance of... An MCU movie and it definitely did you could tell that they spent a lot more money into that last episode uh, there was some good fight scenes we definitely had some good CGI there to, to put that all into place and it was definitely some good costumes The the costume work in this last episode was amazing so um, we'll start right in the beginning we had the big fight scene which was expected between uh, Agatha Harkness and Wanda you know, Scarlet Witch. So, it was a pretty good fight scene. You know, I don't know, I guess, how much more you could have gotten out of it from two witches fighting. I don't know. They, it, you kind of had that, like, floating witch type of action, which, you, you know, I guess it's what you were expecting. But, what I wasn't too happy about, or I guess it was kind of predictable, is that we saw... Wanda getting her chaos magic getting drained by Agatha and it was like what she wanted it's like yeah give me some more shots I want more shots you know I'm out here I'm not protected by anything I'm basically here to drain your magic so <laughs> and uh, we ended up seeing that it was obviously pretty predictable that you know she was able to get her magic back because she casted her own her own spell that she learned on the previous episode from Agatha you know, you can't use magic against your own magic when there's relics being cast. So, uh, that was, I thought that was pretty lame. You know, we definitely saw how, how quick Wanda was to learn. Because obviously previous to WandaVision, she didn't have any idea of magic. She just kind of used her powers as she saw fit. So, we really saw some growing in, in her character going into episode 9. So, uh, I thought that was pretty cheesy, to be honest, you know, seeing that part of it. Um, going forward, there were some other things. So, like, Kevin Feige, you know, was, was talking about how supposedly it was going to be six hours worth of content for WandaVision. And, uh, which, which would have had to be the last three episodes, our episodes, for that to actually happen, or an additional 10th episode for that to fill in, like another 45 minutes or so. So we clearly didn't see that. I was hoping to see a little bit more content. Um, unfortunately, that was what it was. You know, going back to the actual episode, though, we saw that... So what was the big thing there? We, <laughs> we found out that Ralph, or, you know... Pietro was Ralph Boner <laughs> through a little interaction with um, Monica Rambeau. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, a nice little trope to the uh, speculators thinking that there was going to be actual multiversal event there with the introduction of, um, you know, Fox's Quicksilver into the MCU. And we, we ended up finding out he was just a regular character in the... Um, or I guess a regular, you know, citizen living in Westview, which I thought was pretty funny under uh, under 
Agatha's, you know, spell. So that was hilarious. You know, that was kind of like a big, like, F you to the speculators, which, which was great. Um, another thing that we thought through the, uh, the episode was the big vision on vision battle. So I thought initially that was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to see, you know, vision in the hex battling the colorless vision, the white vision created by, um, sword or uh, director Hayward. So once he got in there, we started seeing the fight scenes. It was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I thought it could have been a little bit longer. They could have stretched it out a little bit, seen some more action, because there wasn't a lot of action in this last episode, and I feel like they had to, in a 50-minute episode, which obviously it wasn't 50 minutes because there was end credits and then a recap in the beginning, so it was probably like 45-ish minutes worth of actual content, that they needed to be longer, longer episode. And uh, we lost, unfortunately, the viewer lost a lot on actual action. And um, I, I thought they could have worked on that. So the action initially was really good. And then they got into that little building hall, like looked like a library or whatever. And they started talking. And um, what I thought was pretty funny was the colorless or the white vision ended up being Paul Bettany. And that was another trope to the speculators. He, he purposely put it out there, it was one specific actor I couldn't wait to actually, you know, deal with. And <laughs> it ended up being himself, so, he, which, I don't want to take anything back on that, he did an amazing job. You know, I, I couldn't imagine how hard it would be to just act with yourself on a, another character, which was the same character. So that was pretty cool. Um, a lot of people were, were speculating that it was going to be, you know, including myself. I, I thought it was going to be James Spader was going to reprise his role as Ultron and director Hayward was going to put his AI into the colorless vision. And that would have been really cool. That would have been a, a nice little kickback to the uh, age of uh, Ultron. So um, that was really neat. I thought that was nice. But like I said, the action could have been a little bit longer from the uh, Vision v. Vision fight. Um, moving on later into the episode, we, um, let's see, we ended up finding out that after, she, after Wanda drains Agatha's uh, power, she just, you know, ends up hanging out there uh, in Westview on the ground and, you know, we find out that she's just going to be hanging out in Westview for the future. And uh, she was like, well, you know, you're going to need me later on. And I, I, I believe that that's going to be the case. She's definitely going to need her later on for what I think is coming. And, um, but we'll get back to that after. So the other thing we saw was S.W.O.R.D. Obviously, when she breaks the hex, because her family was starting to uh, wither away, we see S.W.O.R.D. go in there. They start battling S.W.O.R.D. We get this really cool Avengers Assemble part there when you see um, Vision, Wanda, and the two kids all together looking like they're going to battle. It's like, yeah, you, you weren't prepared for this, but you were born for it. So we got that really cool uh, scene there. You start seeing the kids take on the sword agents, and then um, obviously they take care of them. So that was cool. We um, Later on into the episode, we find out that, you know, the kids just like disappear, they go away. And then you you find out that uh, the colorless vision just kind of drifts away. Once he gets his memories that, you know, he had already, he just couldn't access them through vision. And he disappears, the, uh, the two kids disappear, and they start to like, you get that little emotional, you know, goodbye at the end that, um, you know, Vision was like, oh, we'll see each other again in the future. And then she basically brings back the, um, the hex or the cast on the town that she, um, she had. And they disappear as well. And then she's kind of like on her own. Back to what it was in the beginning when the town where it was and then the house wasn't even there. So that was cool. I, I like that little, little ending to it. And then 
it goes into the post credits. So the first one was nice. We um, we see Monica Rambo talking to this agent there in the theater, and she reveals herself to be one of the scrolls, which was really cool. I thought initially we were gonna get director Hayward because he ends up being this really bad guy. And and I was thinking right off the bat that there was something not right about him, whether something happened previously to the snap or the blip, which they call, which I think was the dumbest thing they called it, was the blip. And um, something either happened to him prior to his family or he was like secretly a scroll or, and or Hydra. Because you always had that feeling that they were out to always get these, um, out to get Wanda, out to get, you know, Monica Rambeau. He didn't like Jimmy Woo. So he was like, he was definitely up to no good. And then obviously recreating Vision as a sentient weapon. So unfortunately, we just see him get arrested <laughs> and then he goes away. So I was like, this is really lame. You know, they could have, they could have explored more on that. Otherwise, why even make him to be the, the bad director that he is. So going back to the post credit scene where you see that she's talking to the, the scroll agent and she ends up, you know, pointing up there. It's like, we need to have a talk up there, meaning that she's gonna go up into space to the actual sword space base orbiting Earth. And that's where, if you've seen the, uh, I believe it was the Spider-Man movie, you see that Nick Fury's hanging out, he's the actual director of sword, hanging out at the actual base outside of um, Earth's orbit, or orbiting Earth. So you can see she's gonna actually make a little visit up there, and then I'm sure she's gonna get more revealing information about the scrolls and what's been going on to fill in the gaps. The second post credit scene, which I liked even more, was, was really cool. We find out a little bit on, I, I don't know if we want to say it was the mountain that we get. So she, you see Wanda hanging out at a little, you know, wooden cabin by herself on an island. And it looks like Magamore Mountain. You, well, you could speculate that it's that mountain. And you see Wanda in astral form sitting there with the dark hold reading and i didn't mention this earlier but the big you know easter egg from the previous episode which was the dark hold was sitting in agatha's basement is the actual book indeed the dark hold that was revealed by agatha using the magic and there's like there's a whole chapter devoted to you on chaos magic and how powerful you really are but you don't even know it like you were destined to destroy the planet. And then she says that specifically. So she's actually in there in astral form. So she, she learned already how to project herself and she's reading the dark hole, trying to decipher it, trying to figure out how to get her kids back and potentially how to, in the future, meet back with vision. And you can hear the two kids quickly, right at the end of the uh, credits that, uh, so I'm sure she's trying to figure out how to do it. And obviously there's a lot of magic involved in the Dark Hold. If you're not familiar with the Dark Hold, the um, first appearance of the Dark Hold was Marvel Spotlight number four, uh, which was also the uh, third appearance of Werewolf by Night. So the Dark Hold involves Kathan. Yes, it's pronounced Kathan. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people have butchered this uh, this character's name, Kathan. So he's obviously a demon that is in a different dimension, ties into the Doctor Strange multiverse of madness, obviously, and um, he's the one that creates the Darkhold. So you have all of the dark sorcery, you know, chaos magic, and so forth. He writes. He actually wrote it, and it got put into the book. It got spellbound into the actual book, and whoever possesses this book possesses Kathan's knowledge, a little bit of his power, and you, you can have pretty much limitless power. And you see her using that book to figure out how to get the two kids back. So we don't know where they are, they're probably in a dark dimension. Some would say 
probably hanging out with Mephisto because um, in the comics you see dark shards of the kids taken by it was a piece of Mephisto. So as we saw, Mephisto was not the big bad. This is where I get into the where this spec gone wrong <laughs> portion. And I couldn't tell you, I've never seen a series or movie in recent history that was so spec driven as WandaVision was. And I saw it on many YouTube channels, a lot of the big, big YouTube channels, like the pop culture ones, not the comics specific ones, the ones that had like over 100K subscribers. And they were driving the specs so, so heavy that Mephisto was coming, Nightmare was coming, Doctor Strange had to show up and pull Wanda out of there because she couldn't defeat Agatha. Um, X-Men were coming, we we're, were gonna get this secret cameo of Professor X and or Magneto because Magneto is her father in the comics and on a certain storyline. And none of it happened, none of it happened, which was hilarious. So it was, it was a big, a big F you to the speculators. This is why I say it's very dangerous to get heavy on spec when there's nothing to actually validate the spec. So it was funny to see some of the actors like Paul Bettany and uh, and uh, Elizabeth Old Elizabeth Olsen, I think his name, yeah, um, to speculate on the speculation, saying that obviously couldn't wait to meet with this specific actor when there was no actors actually cast for the show. And previous to WandaVision, this script was written prior to the Fox deal. So it would have been tough to add X-Men in there, but they did do reshoots. They did reshoots at the end, but it would have been tough. It would have had to be like a quick cameo, if anything, to actually have some X-Men, you know, spec involved. So the Quicksilver one was hilarious. Definitely, definitely a nice trope to the uh, speculators. So it was... It, it, it was pretty funny. It had it had its moments, um, but going back to the spec, this is where you know the speculation went absolutely crazy in uh, Wandavision. Um, even Feige, Feige played around with this a little bit, saying it was going to be six hours worth of um, worth of content, and we didn't get it, <laughs> which was fine. The show was great. I enjoyed the show, but. Um, it, it definitely showed that speculation got way out of hand um, in this series and I, I kind of expect it to go a little bit going forward because these Disney Plus shows are here to stay there's gonna be a ton of them and I just say be careful <laughs> do not get into a book very very pricey hoping that it will pay out because um, you saw it firsthand in WandaVision. The other big one that we I had not mentioned yet was the engineer. A lot of people mentioned that this engineer was going to introduce somebody big. It was it could have been that big key cameo. And um, sorry about that. And um, a lot of people speculated that it was it was going to be uh, the engineer was going to be Adam Brashear the uh, Blue Marvel. <laughs> that was another big bust. Hopefully nobody got into that book big because you were starting to see some record prices for uh, Adam Blue Marvel book. I thought that character was just trash. And um, to see him not show up in there was, was hilarious. So um, who knows if the character shows up later? I don't know. Because the big tie in Blue Marvel was there was a romantic relationship with Monica Ro uh, Rambeau in the comics uh, very recently. So uh, a lot of people thought that that was going to be the engineer that created the um, the sword vehicle to go through the hex. That never happened. I thought personally it could have been Dr. Hank Pym because he's also a brilliant engineer and you wouldn't have had to actually cast somebody because he was already in the MCU. So to me that made sense if they were going to make somebody in it and it would have tied in obviously into the into the multiverse because because of the Ant-Man, uh, what do you call it, the Ant-Man movies. So that would have been cool and that would have pieced it into obviously to the Loki series that's coming out later this year. But that never happened. The engineer ended up just being some random guy that they never really any, gave any credit to and then obviously the vehicle didn't make it through so that, <laughs> that was the end of that. It was a crappy engineer. 
So it just shows you it's 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 quite dangerous to, to speculate on these books. Um, I expect it to continue forward, especially with the Loki series. You're going to see a lot of interesting spec for Loki. Um, Winter Soldier in the in uh, the Falcon series, I'm excited for it. The Falcon and Winter Soldier. I don't think it's going to be as heavy spec driven because a lot of these uh, there's not going to. I don't think there's going to be a lot of big characters introduced. Um, I I do see it being an interesting series. It's going to be action packed, but I don't think it's going to be as good storytelling as it was for Wandavision was. But uh, that's just me personally. You know, I'm just ranting at this point um but that was really it the um i'm gonna do a quick little unboxing because we can't finish this off without a, a book you know so i already opened up the actual package it came in a nice package and uh let's see get some more music in here so i opened it up already but i haven't actually here's the package within the box obviously that came in packaged well this was part of the big spec book that I talked about with Darkhold I think this is a very good book to buy because the book is dirt cheap and um, when I always say when speculating if you can speculate on a book and that doesn't break the bank then that worst case you didn't waste that much money you know it's not like you wasted five six hundred dollars on Adam Blue Marvel hoping that the character pans out, <laughs> which it didn't pan out. Um, not, not, not just picking on that book, There's, there was many others. Mephisto never panned out, but Mephisto is different because it's a Silver Age classic versus a modern book. You know, Nightmare didn't pan out, but Nightmare is Strange Tales 110. That's a grail to many books, to many uh, collectors. Um, there were some great books, don't get me wrong. West Coast Avengers, I think 47, The Colorless or White Vision. Great dollar book for the longest time. That's a $100 to $200 book right now. That was a great pan out. But I'm just saying, speculation has its risks. But anyways, going back to Dark Hole, this is a good 90s book to get in on dirt cheap that's gonna have implications going forward with Kathan. Yes, Kathan. <laughs> and this is uh, Dark Hole. Pages from the Books of Sins, issue number one. This is part four of six from the Rise of the Midnight Suns, and it's at nine eight. So um, they talked about the Dark Hold. Agatha Harkness mentioned the book as the Book of the Damned. Here it's called the Book of the Sins. It's referred to many things. It's called also called Book of Cthan, Cthan's Tales. It, it goes on. It's it's basically the Book of Cthan, his his magic. So it's a cool cover ties in obviously to the supernatural which was, is the way that they're going into phase four and phase five great book to buy in at five dollars or less and get it slapped i paid only forty dollars shipped for this book so you can't go wrong with that um but that's it hopefully you guys enjoy this um if i were to give it a grade on one division overall i'd give it a b plus i thought it was a great series a great first series to introduce the MCU Disney Plus um, shows. I'm interested in seeing what the uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier shows uh, come about. It's going to be in two weeks. I don't have per se as much optimism for that show as I did with WandaVision because I think it's just going to be a lot of action and a little bit of origin just like this was but um, it tied a lot into the multiverse which I don't think that series will because I think it's only three episodes but um, I'm excited to still see it either way and then all the other shows coming forward so like I said if I were to give it a rating I'd give it a B plus um, if I were to rewatch it from the beginning or if you hadn't watched it yet and you're seeing this video I would probably say skip the first two episodes because it wasn't much storytelling there and start from episode three and go forward. So uh, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Um, I love to give you guys great content. My opinion on certain books, books to look out for, 
and so forth. So until next time, Smart Expect the Comics.